The Ender 3 Max! Max! Maximum! <laughs> Maximum Ender! <laughs> what up everybody, Bob Hansen here from Elevated Prince 3D. Bill Clemmer. And we're here too, in case you didn't get that awesome intro, review the Ender <laughs> 3 Max. Um, so if this is something you've been interested in checking out, maybe you want a larger format printer, then stay tuned and watch this video. All right, looks like you wanted to see what this bad boy can handle and see if it's going to help elevate your life or not. So let's just kind of jump into it. Uh, they sent us this printer free of charge just for the purposes of reviewing for you guys. So thank you. We do appreciate that. This, again, is 100% our opinion, just like every other video we make. If you don't believe us, good for you. We appreciate that. And yeah, so we'll just kind of jump on into this. Um, the boxing, let's talk about that. What did you think about how it was boxed up and everything, shipment and everything? Shipping was all right. Came in a big box, big. really big box. Okay. I was surprised. Big I was like, box. wow, how big is this thing? <laughs> but uh, it wasn't that big, as big as the box anyway. <laughs> but, um, and then it came in a smaller box inside that bigger box. Yep. And so, um, but yeah, everything was packaged great, popped right out. Um, literally all I did was screw this on. Yep. Everything else was already done. Yeah, everything. Yeah, the gantry on it. That was That's it. it. That was it. Oh, wiring. Wiring. Mm -hmm. Basic. basic. Super basic, because they do all this, they do it just like any other Ender printer that you might have had. Mm -hmm. They do the Z to the Z. They make sure everything's labeled really easily for you. Mm -hmm. It's super, super easy to put these things together. If you've ever built any other Ender printer, then you definitely know you could build this printer for sure. The Ender 3 Pro was my first machine. Yeah. I loved it for the first... Bit? couple months <laughs> and then I started running into the average problems that the printers have and um yeah 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 right. this but, one's been doing pretty good so far we've been happy with it um we can just kind of jump into that you know I, there was we did have issues though at the beginning yeah very big issues at the beginning uh humongous it, issues at the beginning it wasn't printing right and so we dug really deep into it. We looked in our, all of our settings. We looked in all of it. It was just the first layers were just like really, really squished where they were just not looking right. We'll show you some prints right now. I'm going to show you this one here. That. That's just one of the benches that we did. And what the problem was, was the, uh, the motor bracket with the linear rod, if it's not perfectly lined up, I mean, I'm talking like perfectly straight up and down, your print is not going to be accurate at all. It's just not going to print right. And nope. so what do we do to fix that? Um, which part? This part? Or yeah, yeah. So we printed a shim. A um, shim? Bob designed it. I did. And we printed it out and it worked really, really, really well. We uh, took the motor off of the mount mm -hmm. and kind of just let it sit flush how it would um, without being screwed in. Mm -hmm. And then we took that measurement and... I believe it was like a millimeter. It wasn't much. That, it wasn't much. That needed to be shimmed. And then another thing that people recommended was to check the tightness on your gantry. And the eccentric nuts in particular. in particular. Yeah. And boy. Ours were cranked. I mean, cranked oh, down. Cranked. So tight. Um, so essentially what yeah. was happening um, is that those eccentric nuts were too tight. It was not allowing it to actually lift up how much it should lift up to the next layer and was just printing on that same layer again and again and again, which is that weird smashed kind of bumpy effect that you're seeing on the bottom of that benchy that you might see on a lot of Edna printers yeah to be honest with you i know mine had it mine had, had it so in fact i now i know how to fix my ender that's been sitting collecting dust because i haven't figured out how to fix it that was the problem that was the problem yep once absolutely. i loose unloosen those nuts and we i think it was a combination of the shim and and the eccentric, and the eccentric nuts, nuts. Yeah. um that really helped i mean i think i need to shim my ender yeah, um, unfortunately, <laughs> I think I, I really think it's just you know something that has to do with maybe factory. I think just mass production. Yeah, they're mass production. It's out. You guys order printers, and they're we all to just get we're, out. we're all clicking order, so they have yeah. to <laughs> they have to give it to us. Um, so, but yeah. Other than that, you know, that's the only thing we've really had to fix. You might notice it's on a. Uh, big cinder or cement block, but we just do that with any printer to be honest with you. It helps with sound reduction, it helps with the vibrations mm -hmm. of the print. Honestly, like I think it helps with print quality. All well, yeah, around. because it reduces the vibration, which yeah. reduces the amount that it's moving around, you know? Yeah. It's all good. It's a great, it's been a fun little printer, or, sorry, not little, it's been a fun big printer so far. Yeah, it's the Max. We have the uh, CR6, or no, the, uh, what is that one down there? XBICO? CR10. Oh, the CR10. Yeah, yeah yes. we have the CR10 as well. It's an older model that I got used offline. It does have a little bit more mm -hmm. Z height, height. Um, which I don't really understand why they cut down on the Z height here. Um, yeah. They could have just kept it with that 400, but it's 300 by 300 by 340. Yep. Um, and it it's big and it works. 
Let's jump into the specs then while we just mentioned the build volume. Yeah. Um, silent motherboard. Really nice. You might notice you don't really hear too many sounds while it's printing. You can hear the retraction. You can hear the fans. Those look the fans are probably the loudest part. Yeah, and definitely. It's more or less not even the fans here. It's the fan on the, the power supply unit. Yeah, you hear that more than anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and realistically, uh, it's got a filament sensor, which does work, which is good to know. Uh, we've had some filament snap before on some prints and it definitely recognized that the filament was not in there anymore. We didn't have to go in and bend any piece. It worked right off the gate. I know yep. we've had other printers where the filament sensor doesn't want to work properly, but this one seems to be working just fine. Yeah, no, it worked right out of the box. Um, one thing, I mean, if any printer, if you're going to do an upgrade, I would recommend upgrading to a dual gear extruder just because it grips better. Mm -hmm. We haven't had any clogging issues and we've done PETG on it. Yep. And we've done other, we've done PETG and PLA on it so far and it's been handling those just fine. Yep. Just we make sure you level this ginormous bed before oh you start a print gosh. because I'm telling you, if you don't level the bed right, you are going to experience clogs because if you're going to be too close, you're going to experience mm -hmm. a clog. Uh, later on, and it, and it can present itself anywhere in the print. That's the weird part. It, yeah. it really can. It can present itself anywhere in the print. So yeah, because you just got that excess material in there that just kind of gunking up, uh, yep. and all of a sudden it just whoop, stops yep. it. So you know? um, what do you think of the build plate? The build plate's cool. It's, it's their nice. Standard um, one yeah, now. at this point it's standard. Yeah. Uh, it's a really big piece of glass. Um, it works Come good uh, for the most part. We, PTG, yeah. PTG, we had to use some, which is common with glass anyway, having yeah. to use some sort of buffer between them. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's stuck really good. Right now it's printing a mask and it's sticking. Yeah. We haven't had any issues with it no, thus far. A lot of supports too, you know, and it, yep. it seems to be retracting just fine. Yep. Um, the nozzle and the bed heat up really nice. It does when you do the preheat, it will heat up the bed first and then heat up the nozzle, which I think that's just kind of to conserve a little bit of power. You can make it heat up at the same time. It, it will do it just fine. It doesn't have any issues with that. So that's really nice. Yep. yep. Um, the screen, it's just your standard Edner screen with your standard settings, you know. Um, go update the firmware if you can. It's like version 1.0.1, you know. Marlin 3.0 is out. I, Creality, please, <laughs> just send your printers with upgraded firmware. It's not that hard, you know, just flash your firm. It's a silent board. It's able to be flashed. So why is it not? <laughs> That's my big question. Yeah. I understand yeah. that they might be happy with 1.1 and it works. I get that. But it's, why not upgrade it? Why not get it to the firmware that it should be at? I agree. You know, I think that's something that we will be doing down the road. Oh, definitely. To make it so it prints even better, faster. We want to put a BL touch on it because with a build plate like this, you need the BL touch. Yeah, I agree. I agree entirely. I was just yeah. about to say, when, when you level this thing, you're going to level it. You're going to think it's level and then you're going to print something and you're going to be like, <laughs> oh man. And then you're going to try to level it again and you're going to be like, oh, this is going to take a while. So yeah. it is a, you know, it's a process. Leveling this big of a bed is a process, and it, it, but it's a basic process and you really should dial that in like right off the bat. Um, yeah, he does the leveling. He really likes builders doing the uh, four circles and then the circle on the inside, Yep. which is really nice. I find it to be a great tool to level with because it'll show you how close you are on each corner. It'll show you how well the center prints and yes. a little, just a little file I sliced up and designed myself. Actually, it wasn't too hard, just circles. Yeah. Just circles. Yeah, but. yeah, really, really easy. I like it. Um, well, we'll kind of jump into some prints to show yeah. you. We didn't have a lot of prints because we dealt with so many issues of trying to get it to print properly that we literally printed like, oh, what would you say, 10, 12 benches? Yeah, 12, 13 benches probably. You know, it was yeah. just so many benches. I think that this out. was probably the best one we got to print. Yes. Gotta get a little this? closer, put your hand behind it. Yeah. It's not too much angle for that. But yeah, it's definitely, that was the best benchy that we got out of it. No squishing on the bottom, no issues there. It didn't have any layer lines realistically. I mean, you can see a little bit. It's good quality for an Edner. It's very good quality for an Edner, you yeah, know? Not bad at all. Yeah, I, I like it. I think it did a really good job. We did also do a Big Ben, but we believe that Big Ben is cursed. <laughs> we really do. Any time we've ever printed a Big Ben, it's stopped at like, what, like 80%? Yep. And, and any printer, we just can't get it to print. I don't know. Can someone send us a Big Ben file that works? Yeah, one that time, would be nice. one time <laughs> I was trying to print the Big Ben file, and my friend came over and he stumbled into the printer and knocked it over at around eighty <laughs> percent. Um, then we tried it again, and then, and then we clogged. tried it again and it clogged. And then we tried it again, but I uh, this one was my bad. I had put a zip tie on one of the cables oh, yeah. on the CR10 where I shouldn't have put it, and yeah, <laughs> that failed. So. We've printed Big Ben, I think, four times now. Four or five times. And every time. every time. We don't print Big Ben anymore. Yeah, we, I just don't think it's safe. Yeah. 
I just don't think it's safe. Uh, another print we did before we fixed the shimming on it and everything like that was this torture test by Clock Spring 3D. If you are not already paying for his subscription Clock, to Clock Spring 3D Patreon, boy, you're missing out on some amazing prints. Uh, well, I'll put a link in the download in the bottom section so that way you guys can go right to his Patreon. 100, 100% worth it. I his designs are outrageous. Spectacular. If you follow us on Instagram at Elevated Prints 3D, you have already seen some of the prints. That this was Clock Spring, right? Spring. Yeah, yeah, that was Clock Spring right there. Let's Wait. just show it off. I want to show, show them. Here's... I don't know if this one has been on the gram yet. This was not on the Ender. This was right on a... That one just right on it and let it rotate. Yeah, okay. This was on a Prusa. Yeah. Um, but, my goodness. It's not going to... Uh, <laughs> it's kind of working. <laughs> That's not going to work. <laughs> but yeah, it's really dope. It's a little like twisty thing, but definitely go check out his page. Well worth it. He's really, really cool. He's got a lot of great designs. He takes input from everybody on the comment section, so that's really good. And yeah, and then now let's show you this dope base. You know, I think we'll show it to you with the close-up camera, and then we'll kind of show it to you without the close-up cam as well. It is awesome. The base is called Base Not Base, mm -hmm. because if you technically put it in base mode, it's gonna do like the bottom section, and then it's gonna do one of the curves, and then the other curve, and then the other curve, and then the top, because it's two sections. Now, this is max Z height because, you know, we got to do a max Z height. That's the point of the Ender 3 max is to print big. And it did a good job. Did I genuinely job. like this print a lot. It handled all of the detail. I think if you were to paint it a nice black color and then all of these little rivets there do like a really pretty gold, I think it would really pop. And you could put some fake flowers in it. I think it would be a dope vase to have out on your table. I agree. Yeah. Um... But yeah, like I said, unfortunately we didn't get to do a lot of prints with it because we were focusing on trying to get it to work properly. There we go. I just wanted to show you how it worked. <laughs> As we lose the dies. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely a good printer. If you are looking for a larger format printer that's at a very economical price, definitely well worth yeah. it. Oh yeah. What is the price of this at right now? Oh. Oh, hold on. Let's check it out real quick so we can get you guys the price. Three forty nine. Three forty nine. Three forty nine. You can get this printer for three hundred and forty nine dollars off of Amazon. That's actually a great price for it really as big, <laughs> big of a volume as this is. That's a great. That's a good price. It really is. I mean, you think about it. Ender three is yeah. It's like, it's less than twice. It's less than twice the price of an Ender three, right? So about yeah. I would say yeah. You know. Um, well, I paid for it anyway. It's probably um, cheaper now. I don't know. A lot of the filament that we printed with was Yosu filament. So Yosu. Thank you to Yosu for yes. sending us all of the filament to print with. You're keeping us printing so we can continue to make these amazing videos for y'all. Yeah. We do Again, thank you, Yosu. We do appreciate all that you've done to keep us printing. You're really, really great. We do appreciate it a lot. We've got pretty much Yosu running on most of our printers right now. Um, you know, I think that's about it. Any other final thoughts you think we need to... Really well, we always love some more filament. That's true. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, but no, other than that, um, final thoughts on the Ender Max. Um, Ender I like 3 Max. The Ender, yeah, sorry. The Ender 3 Max. I love it. I love the printer. Yeah. Like I said, it's, it's great for anyone that's trying to get a more a larger format printer. It's a genuinely, it's a great price. It's easy to build. You know, if you're getting into 3D printing and you're building cosplay stuff, and stuff yep. I think it'd yep. be a great printer for you. And if you're already into the Ender 3 or the Ender 3 Pros and you've been tinkering with them and you know them, um, yeah, you why not really just get a bigger one? Yeah. Right? Why not? Go big or go home. You don't even need to change the CR series if you already are familiar with the Ender. And yeah. The, I mean, you pretty much have the same build volume here. You, yeah. you lose a little bit, but you pretty much have the same. Well, so. you don't have to deal with the big box thingy that comes on the side for True. the PSU and there all is, that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. There, there's pros and cons. There's pros yeah. and cons. And it, oh, one thing I wanted to mention real quick. Dual fans. Yeah, dual fans. Those dual are fans. Awesome. That's really cool. I forgot about that. The cooling system is noticeably better on Absolutely this machine. Absolutely. It's better. noticeably better. Yeah, you know, I think that's about everything. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe it. Share it with all of your friends. Tell them how great we are. If you don't think we're great, I and mean, you don't have to tell them we're not great, but that's your own opinion if you do want to tell them. <laughs> we still think we're great anyway. We still think we're great anyways. It doesn't matter. Um, the sound quality, we hope, again, that this video had a better sound quality yep. than the last. We've been trying to listen to all of your guys' comments, comment back to you. 
we don't comment back to you really fast. It's just, you know, we're, we're busy people. We both work day jobs and do this on the side and run a, the 3D printing business that we do on the side as well. Yep. So we're yep. pretty busy, but we try to always comment back to you guys. Let us know what you thought of the video, anything we could do better, anything we didn't include, anything you wanted us to include, anything you think we over explained or anything like that. You know, just let us know. Comment, comment, comment. Yes, yes, yes. But yeah, like, share, please subscribe again. And you know, I do think this printer will help elevate your life and others around you. Mm -hmm. I think it's a real, real good one. And with that, we'll just kind of sign off. And thank you, I'm Bob Hansen from Elevated Prints 3D. And Bill Clemmer. And keep it groovy, y'all. See you next time.